Greetings and welcome back to our O-Level Revision series on trigonometry during this COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, today we'll be looking at the applications of trigonometry and Superman will be helping us out. The success criteria for today will be for students to be able to solve problems involving the angles of elevation and depression, as well as solve problems involving bearings, all using trigonometry. So we begin today's lesson with Superman standing on a cliff, harmlessly looking out into the sea. His line of sight is a horizontal line. Now, along comes General Zod. He has to raise his line of sight up to General Zod, so his laser beam eyes form the line of sight and that makes an angle above the horizontal line that we shall call the angle of elevation. In an alternate universe, it was Black Manta who came along. So in this case, Superman has to lower his laser beam eyes. So his line of sight forms an angle below the horizontal line that we shall call the angle of depression. Now to recap. When Superman looks at General Zod, his line of sight makes an angle of elevation above the horizontal line. Whereas from General Zod's point of view, General Zod is making an angle of depression when he looks down at Superman. These two angles are equal based on alternate angles. Similarly, when Superman looks down at Black Manta, his line of sight forms an angle of depression with the horizontal line. And from Black Manta's point of view, when he looks up at Superman, his line of sight forms an angle of elevation with the horizontal line. We can say that these two angles are the same for small distances, because we can assume that the Earth is flat locally. Let's now look at a work example. I have town A and town B, they are 4.3 kilometers apart. A hot air balloon flies 540 meters above town A. Find the angle of depression of town B from the hot air balloon. Let's do this together. Now a good way to solve problems is to have a diagram. We have town A, town B, and we have a balloon. We can form a right angled triangle between these three points. Next, we can label the distances. AB is 4.3 kilometers and the height of the balloon is 0.54 kilometers. Notice that I've converted the units to kilometers to make it easier to deal with. We can first label the angle of depression of town B from the balloon, and this is equal to the angle of elevation of the balloon from town B. I'm gonna call this theta. And using that as our reference angle, tangent theta is equal to 0.54 divided by 4.3. I can undo the tangent function with the inverse tangent function, and this will give me an angle of 7.2 degrees. Remember to conclude your answer with a statement. The angle of depression is 7.2 degrees. And now on to bearings. Bearings is used in navigation as a way to give directions. If I want the bearing of A from B, I need to be clear that I am from B. I draw a ray from B to A, and I measure the angle shown here in yellow, clockwise from the north reference ray shown in green, all the way to the ray B to A. Similarly, if I want the bearing of B from A, I need to be clear that I am from A. So I need the angle clockwise from the north reference ray all the way to the ray AB. This angle is shown in green. Note that bearing is always three digits long before the decimal place. For example, I can give a bearing of 088.8 degrees or 007 degrees, but never just 7 degrees. I'd like to point out an important relationship between the bearing of B from A and the bearing of A from B, shown here as the green and yellow angles. I can always take the bigger angle and divide it into two pieces. One part will be 180 degrees, while the smaller piece will be equal to the smaller angle. Hence, I can note that the difference of the values between the bearing of B from A and the bearing of A from B is always 180 degrees. Let's move on to worked example 2. Given that town B is 5 kilometers from town A at a bearing of 075 degrees, and town C is 9 kilometers from town A at a bearing of 142 degrees, A, find the distance of town C from town B, 
and B, find the bearing of town C from town B. Let's do this together. We're going to need a bit of space for this one, so we're going to shift the question to the top left. Next, we need a diagram to help us visualize this problem. So we begin with town A, and we're given that town B is 5 kilometers away at a bearing of 75 degrees, so that's where we mark B. And we know that town C is 142 degrees, which is an additional 67 degrees clockwise from the ray AB, and it is 9 kilometers away. So with that, we've constructed triangle ABC. Since we know the values of AB, AC, as well as the included angle, the angle in between the two known lengths, we are pointed towards using the cosine rule. Using the cosine rule, we can find the length of BC, and this will give us 8.42 kilometers. To find the bearing of town C from town B, marked here in grey, we need to use angles about a point. So we just need to find out this red and this purple angle. This red angle can be found using interior angles because the green and red angle add up to 180 degrees. For the purple angle, we notice that it is opposite this 9 kilometers, whereas the yellow angle, 67 degrees, is opposite the answer that we found in part A. This points us to the use of sine rule. Now let's carry out the plan. We find the red angle by taking 75 degrees away from 180 degrees, giving us 105 degrees. This is interior angles. Next, we perform the sine rule. Sine ABC over 9 is equal to sine 67 over 8.41. This will tell us that angle ABC is equal to 79.8 degrees. So, the grey angle that we want to find is equal to 360 degrees minus the two angles that we just found, and that will be 175.2 degrees. I'm going to attach some additional practice in the form of worksheets in the info section. I will also attach the solution sheet for you to self-check your answers when you're done with the worksheet. Let's now end where we began. Let us reflect on the success criteria. At the end of today's lesson, are you now able to solve problems involving angles of elevation and angles of depression using trigonometry? Are you able to solve problems involving bearings using trigonometry? If you have any further questions from today's lesson, please post them in the comment section below. We have come to the end of part 6 of the trigonometry series. In part 7, we will look at some further applications of trigonometry in the form of 3D problems. Until then, I'd like to thank you for your kind attention and have a great day of learning.